Bill Burr versus Bill Maher on the Club Random podcast. Bill Maher decided uh, it was a good idea to just, you know, take a shot at the kids, as they say, as at the campus protesters uh, who just had their encampments broken up. And then uh, some of them across the country, of course, disrupted various commencement ceremonies uh, last weekend. I assume more will come this weekend. But here's uh, Bill Burr kind of dragging Bill Maher uh, for a couple minutes uh, straight. The kids demonstrating for Hamas, they are in with the terrorists. They were were for the Palestinians. Well, it's sort of the same cause. Why, are you? Um, (laughs) I'm on the side of the kids. Yeah, that's easy to say. You know, no one wants to. Oh, first of all, you know, Bill Maher was against the Iraq war. You know, when you opposed the Iraq war, they called you a Saddam apologist. They called you a terrorism apologist. He knows what a smear that is. And he just fucking says it anyway, just says it anyway. And then an awkward moment passes. And then he senses that Bill Maher, uh, Burr is not with him on this. And so he says, what you are. uh," And here's here's what Bill Burr says. Well, it's sort of the same cause. Why, are you? Um, I'm on the side of the kids. Yeah, that's easy to say. You know, no one wants to see kids dead. Uh, this is a war. That was very that, brave of you to say this that. Is a, this is a <laughs> war. No, I'm the one who's actually brave on this. Oh, so brave. All right, sorry. We're not going to stop it every few seconds, but I that, feel like. That is, that is very brave to be a Zionist in Hollywood. Yeah, it's a tough, very brave. tough position to take. What a position. Really putting himself out there. I just have to pause it here, and then we'll let most of it play through, but. Mar confused what Bill Burr was saying. When Bill Burr yeah. says, I'm with the kids, he meant I'm with the college kids. I agree right. with what the college kids are doing. That's obviously what he said. Bill Maher misinterpreted that as to say, I'm with the kids who are under bombardment in Gaza and still takes the scumbag route to say, yeah, that's easy to say. Oh, so easy to say you support children having the right to live. That's an easy position. I'm the courageous one for going out on the limb and saying that no real politic (laughs) expert that I am, I understand they have to be sacrificed. So he misinterprets what he's saying. He's hard-nosed. Yes, hard-nosed. Hard-nosed. In this case, unnecessarily uh, evil because he misinterpreted what Bill Burr was saying. Bill Burr, when he said the kids, he meant the college kids. You cannot make a racist, apartheid, ethno-state without breaking some Palestinians. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm on the side of the kids. Yeah, that's easy to say. You know, no one wants to see kids dead. Uh, this is a war. That was that, very brave of you to say this that. is a this is a war. No, I'm the one who's actually brave on this. Oh yeah. Uh, it's oh, e- pat it's, yourself on the back. It's easy to say I'm um, for the kids. Who's not for the kids? Well, it comes down well, to you, real hard you, 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 decisions. Not, Clearly, you, you are not for the kids, or you would not have the position that you have, even as the rest of the world is waking up to the horror that Israel actually is and has always been. This war is making people dig into the history of this country in a way that they never have before. And Bill Maher just keeps doubling, tripling, quadrupling down. This is, for anyone paying attention, as horrible as this moment is, we're winning. We are winning. And clearly... The conventional mainstream established wisdom, as much as it's they're going to go go into that good night, kicking and screaming the Zionist faction. The common understanding about Israel is going to be that it was a tragic reaction to a horror in which the people that the horror was perpetrated against reenacted that horror against a people who had nothing to do with it. That is going to be the mainstream understanding sooner than you think. Oh, and, yeah, much sooner. And, like 10 and years. What, and what are people like Bill Maher going to be saying at that point? My experience with these kinds of moral cowards is they drop the subject and pretend they never said it. They, they right. just they just avoid the, the topic. That, that would be my prediction. Although, when you're talking about so, somebody who's so fucking loathsome that his own agency, instead of dropping him, didn't invite him to their party of the year so that he would withdraw on his own. <laughs> he could still be waving the waving the blue and white in ten years. Who knows? Who knows?
Who's not for the kids? Well, it I comes just... down to real hard-nosed decisions. Like no, a country stop talking like you're a general. A country got attacked. <laughs> Israel got attacked. I'm not saying that they didn't have a right to go back. I'm just sitting there going, okay. like, how do I look at what? We're the only country in the world that uh, they get attacked, and then as soon as they counterattack, it's like, well, we got to stop this shit now. Don't attack them. There's a very simple solution to all this problem in the Middle East. Stop attacking Israel. Hey, you stop just... Here's an even simpler solution. Stop occupying land against international law. How's that? How's yes. that? I yes. don't wish see, harm or violence upon anybody, but that that is the simplest. That's the simplest because it's this violence only... has been going on for as long as they've done that. And the reason this violence is happening is because their actions are illegal under international law. Once again, I have to say it not just for you two, but for myself. I do not wish violence upon people. That's not the point of what I'm saying. The point is you make violence inevitable when you occupy a land for right. 75 straight years and not only occupy the land, lock people in a cage, surveil them, deprive them of resources whenever you feel like it and brutalize them. So how's this for a simple solution? Germany loves Israel now, right? Right right after World War II, the Germans were still a little, you know, iffy on the, yeah. the Jews. But now they love yeah. the Jews. Now they love Israel. So you love Israel so much, you feel so guilty about the horror that you committed against the Jews, as you should feel. Clear out the Rhine, move them in. Boom. That's simple. That's really simple. That's yep. even simpler than what Bill Maher said. Yep. Yeah. Maybe maybe I could return to my family's ancestral home. Yeah. My exactly. my family was was driven out of a town a city called Hagen in Germany. Right. There you uh, go. Maybe, maybe maybe we could get our house back. Simple stuff. Attacking Israel. You just I solved did. it. I actually there did. There you go. That's fantastic. Anyway. All right. We let's, don't need let's, to get let's onto to, that. Let, let's go to Russia and uh, the Ukraine. How do you solve that one, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> let me hear your hard-nosed decision about that. Well, let me ask you a question. How, a, how is war still legal? With all the shit that's been canceled. Legal. Why is that still fucking legal? Would you like a real answer to that? Because to for something to be illegal, you have to have the capacity to enforce it. And you can't enforce against war or else you have to go to war with the country that's going to war and we don't want to go to war with russia over ukraine what would be the sense of making it illegal oh that's really going to stop putin uh, all right so now bill doesn't realize it but he has just actually stumbled into an insight yes I israel is illegal yes it's illegally occupying the land that it's on it's illegally refusing the Palestinians the right of return, which I believe the UN established in 1948, not long after the Nakba, that the Palestinians have a right to return. So Israel is in defiance of international law every day of its existence. But you're absolutely right. What does that mean? That and a nickel won't get you on the subway, right? Like, it, unless the UN has an army that's prepared to enforce that, what does it mean? Israel, go, Israel can tell them, go get, their, go get your fucking shine box. They don't care. Well, yes, and this is a function of the political will of imperial powers, i.e. the United States. So there is a, such a thing, Bill, as international law, which Israel is in continuous violation of. Uh, there is such a thing as the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court, both of which are being pushed very hard right now to punish Israel and condemn Israel, as I think is almost certain that they will. The question is, what is the enforcement mechanism? Right, well, there is no do? enforcement mechanism as long as our politics inside the empire are are dominated by psychotically violent, bloodthirsty douchebags like Bill Maher. Like, you are the problem here. The problem is not that there is no system of law governing the uh, you know, behaviors between nations, there is. The problem is it's unenforceable because too many people in America are as sociopathic as Bill Maher to say, well, yeah, no, it's easy to say that you, it's easy to say you don't want kids dead, but these are hard-nosed decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Again, lightweight. Yeah. Guy's been drinking for 50 years. He's slurring his words 20 minutes into this interview. That's Fucking beside the point. Yeah, lightweight. But like that's that's the problem. The problem is people like you, Bill. The problem is not that there are no laws in place. There is international law. There are war crimes. There are statutes. Right. We have the the um, uh, institutional framework 
to hold right. countries to account. We just don't have the political will to do that here, and so there's no mechanism to put that into action. There, there's no military mechanism, uh, from what I understand. If they are found guilty that in in uh, the ICC and the ICJ, that will force under EU law. I believe that will force them to stop trading with Israel. Right. 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 Um, so it will have rather devastating economic consequences for them. But yeah, can you send an army in? No, I mean, they never developed that capacity. The Korean War was kind of an attempt to do that, to have the UN go in and enforce its will in that way. And we see how that turned out. So they never, as far as I know, they never really tried to do anything like that again. All right, now here's the point that Bill Burr is most equipped uh, to make here. No, to stop people from going to war, you have to also put boots. can't sit down and talk it out. Do a po- Why can't Putin do a podcast with the head guy? Like, you just solved the Middle East on a podcast. Why can't they solve what they're doing on a podcast? See, make this some, is why this is not your thing. Make, make, this is make my, some this hard noise. It's not thing. your thing. It's what you, my, you, you It is my It thing. isn't your yeah, thing. This is not it your isn't. Thing. You're like that Playing guy that it. has a fantasy football team no, and thinks no, he's no, a fucking no, GM. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like, why am I fucking listening to you like, like you've done something? <laughs> what have you done in Oh, it's funny that you would say that to him on his show. It's pretty ballsy to say, but it's so true. It's so true. And, you know, this got yeah. me thinking about the format of of news and commentary. Like when you think about it, like the Daily Show and the Bill Maher show, they were like the first podcasts. They were on TV, but they're basically podcasts like the Daily Show. You'd play a video and you'd comment sure. on the video and you'd take the piss out of what you just saw. And Bill Maher sure. did a lot of the same kind of stuff on his show. Sure. But they were gatekeepers because you couldn't do a podcast. You had to take that format and put it on television, very formalized with big production budget. So only a very, very small handful of people actually got to do it. Now that anybody can do one of these things with uh, some minimal startup costs, very minimal, like a computer with, I mean, we, we did spend a lot of money on that backdrop. You're sporting there. Yeah, exactly. This was $35 this backdrop, but now that there's no barrier to entry, that, anyone that, can that do was it like six soapy hand jobs behind the bus station yeah anyone can do it and so if anyone can do it then bill Barr's right who the hell are you like who are you are your insights any better than say right ours no right who's no. bill Maher? who's who bill, Maher? bill who are Maher? you now now right, that anybody right. can do what you do you, there's you no reason to, to watch you anymore Oh, well, this yeah. is what I do. This isn't what you do. What do you mean? Bill Burr has a podcast. Bill Burr doesn't follow politics as closely as you do. But given your level of incuriosity and ignorance, it wouldn't take him that long to catch up. He, he apparently understands this issue better than you do. So why would anyone watch you instead of him when all this content is available for free at everyone's fingertips? Why would people subscribe to HBO to watch your show where you talk about this stuff when your insights are are garbage your takes are garbage your knowledge is garbage like there is no like who are you yeah who the hell are you what have you done why am i listening to you the answer 20 years ago is because he was the only guy on so you had to listen to him or you listen to nobody now well with all these options yeah who the fuck are you well well you know who he is he's he's a great representative for a certain kind of get off my lawn boomer that's scared of the rising generation changes in society that they don't understand yes um and given that the general audience for tv is elderly to dead um that's why he does well in the ratings relatively because he's kind of perfectly pitched to the demographic that watches a lot of tv and people in this space always said and i think it's true because if you look at his guest lineup up until a couple of years ago almost no online people almost no podcasters no online right. commentators all from you know legacy media yeah. Yeah. print media cnn nbc because that's the world from which he he came and um he he was he felt threatened by the the podcast world right. now that he has a podcast of his own he's kind of loosened on that a little bit but still when you watch real time it's all these relics that you haven't yeah, heard yeah, of yeah. in 20 years yet. You got fucking uh, uh, Nicholas Kristoff, the op-ed writer for the Times. Like, nobody's heard or cared what these yeah, people yeah. have had to say in decades. And that's still who dominate his show. Now he has a podcast, so he'll talk to guys like Bill Burr and, you know, open up that sphere, um, uh, you know, well, uh, well, on, his, on his online show. But, but he was always very protective of um, 
established media, right? He always held himself in very high regard because he wasn't online. Anybody can go on the computer and do a show. I have the backing of HBO. I have a deal with the network. Therefore, sure. I have legitimacy sure. that these other people don't have. Now that's just – that is totally not true anymore. That's right. totally not true anymore. Right. That That's out the window, and that that's part of what these goons are reacting against. They want a control over the conversation that they see slipping away, and they don't know what to do about it. That's why they're all pro-censorship. You see any of these people speaking out about the Twitter files? They, they, right. they, 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 they like the government interfering because, as, as you've pointed out, they know they're never going to say anything interesting enough to get censored. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Please clap.